This past year has created a great shift in the balance of energies and it's also ushered in a new way of being for many of us. The Divine Feminine is rising in a massive way and in this video I want to share with you 13 signs that you have experienced a Divine Feminine awakening or that you are experiencing a Divine Feminine awakening. And I'm also going to share with you five practices that you can use to deepen that connection. I want to get straight into the signs. So sign number one is that you are looking for information on the wild woman or the divine feminine. And you find yourself looking for this information and sometimes you don't even know why. You just feel this attraction and this curiosity about finding out more and about bringing some of that into your life. It could also be that you might have had some exposure, some experience with this in the past, but you have now stepped it up a level where you really feel uh, you're ready to dive in deeper. You want to create a deeper connection and ex explore even more. Sign number two is when you are ready to face your darkness. So your ego is now in a space where you can really turn into and face those hidden parts of yourself that you've kept hidden, you know, from yourself and from everyone else. So really starting to work with the, the habits and the beliefs and the um, behaviors that have kept you contained, that have kept you small and that makes your life miserable and makes you bored with, with your life. So it's almost like there's this energy of, I'm done with this, right? I'm so over this, I'm now ready to move on. Sign number three is that you begin to have this urge to create and it, it can be anything. So you, you might want to birth a project or a business or a child. Um, you want to create some art or anything really that you want to express yourself through, through painting or through, through cooking or through writing. So it's really this call of creativity, this urge to create that is, that is coming to the forefront. Sign number four is that you desire connection and community with other women. So you might find yourself in a place where you long to deepen the, the layers of friendship that you have. You lo you're looking for women, like-minded women that you can connect with, that you can have deeper um, heart conversations with. Sign number five is that you listen to your intuition more. So you are starting to pay attention to these nudges that you are getting. You're beginning to trust yourself more. You stop questioning your own motivations, your own decisions, and you are really leaning into your inner wisdom. So that's a big sign of our divine feminine that's awakening as we're starting to trust ourselves and leaning into our own, our own wisdom as opposed to relying on everyone out there to define us and to define our choices and direction in life. Now sign number six is that you find that you become more sensitive. And this can be sensitivity for food, for alcohol, for smells, for fabrics, uh, for medication. So really, you, it's like you up level in terms of your sensitivity. Also sensitive, more sensitive towards other people's moods and feelings and other people's energy. Now, if you're a sensitive person, this can be particularly difficult because already as sensitive people, we... Um, we are dealing with a heightened level of sensitivity. So if, we, if we're starting to explore and awaken our divine feminine essence, it's possible that that even gets amplified. So if you are sensitive, a tip that I can throw in here when you are going through this awakening is it's so important for you to ground yourself and shield yourself. And if you don't have a regular grounding and shielding practice, then um, it's a good idea to start doing that now. Sign number seven is that you become interested in the cycles of nature. So before you might have just had an opinion about the different cycles, but now you're really um, becoming interested in tapping into the energy. All right, you are 
feeling into the energy of the different seasons, you're noticing how this energy is reflected in your own being and you are starting to align yourself with the different seasons in the year. So you're starting to align yourself with that cycle. And aligned with that, the next sign is that you also start paying attention to your moon cycle. So there'll be a shift in changing your thinking around your monthly cycle, around your moon cycle. And you won't only focus on the menstruation part thereof, but also on the other three other phases of your cycle. You'll also start beginning or start paying attention to where the energy is, where your energy is in the different stages of your moon cycle. And then maybe you even begin to align your your workflow and align your practices and the activities in your month. You're starting to align that with where you are in your moon cycle. Sign number nine is that you start becoming interested in the goddesses. And this is not where it's just a superficial interest in the goddesses, you know, and getting dressed up, but it's really about connecting into the the deeper sense and the deeper meaning that the goddess archetypes can teach us. So connecting into the faces of the divine feminine in how they are represented through the different goddesses. All right, sign number 10 is that you have a yearning for softening. Okay, so this is especially for those of us that have been stuck in our masculine energy for a long time. When you come from your masculine, you end up experiencing pain and exhaustion and tiredness and uh, despair, I almost want to say, at, at times. And there's a yearning for a softening to happen. So this is a good sign that the divine feminine, your wild woman, is calling to you to soften into her essence. Sign number 11 is aligned with that and this is where you find yourself becoming more compassionate. And this compassion not only extends to the people in your life and um, to the world in general, but it's a, a compassion that is turned onto yourself. You find a kindness and a tenderness towards yourself and towards your narrative, towards where you've been and where you are going to. Sign number 12 is that you are quicker to establish strong boundaries. So again, we've got that fierceness coming through where there's a, 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 a voice saying, that is it, it's enough, no more. It ends here. So we are stepping into our power. You are setting boundaries. You are more clear about where your boundaries are. And you, it aligns with the intuition, I think, because you're starting to trust yourself. You're starting to, to trust your own judgment. So setting stronger boundaries and being brave enough to set those boundaries. And then sign number 13 is that you really begin to take on practices and habits and beliefs that allows you to be or to live in integrity. All right, so you are living in alignment with your own truth. What this means is that you stop betraying yourself, you stop criticizing yourself, you stop making choices where you do yourself harm or you let yourself down. So you're really practicing being in alignment with your truth. That's how you lead your life. So those are 13 of the signs. There's obviously more, but those are the 13 signs that you are experiencing or have experienced a divine feminine awakening. And now I want to share with you five practices that you can use to deepen that connection. So the first practice is to work closer with the goddesses. And the way that you can do this is by learning about the goddesses and finding a goddess that resonates with you. So do some research and see which of the goddesses, which of the goddess energy resonates with you. Then what you can do is you write down all of these qualities and the attributes of this goddess 
because this is what you want to embody. You can then meditate on this. You can do a walking meditation or a dancing meditation where you then invoke the goddess and you explore and feel into how you can bring these uh, qualities and attributes, how you can embody them, how you can bring them into your life and how you can express them through your thoughts and your actions. The second practice that you can do is to use your senses to gain pleasure. One of the aspects of the divine feminine is pleasure. It's allowing ourselves pleasure and how we can begin to do that on a practical level is to rely on our five senses to search out pleasure. So through your day, as you go about your day, use your five senses to really tap into how things feel and how things taste and what they look like and what they sound like and how they smell. And what you then begin to do is through your exploration of the senses, you then start doing more of those things that give you pleasure. That's how you bring more pleasure into your life. Often my clients don't know what they like and what they enjoy anymore. So this is a very good practice to start with. If you also don't know what you like and you don't know what you, what you want, is just rely on your senses. Let your senses tell you what gives you pleasure and you begin by bringing more of that into your life. That's how you start. Now our third practice aligns with that and that is to listen to your body wisdom. Our body has so much wisdom to share with us. We only need to be open to receive and to listen. So you can tap into your body wisdom in different ways. You can do it through dance. You can do it through the breath. You can do it through any type of movement. You can do that through listening to music. You can do yoga. So listen or develop the habit of listening what your body has to say to you and then honor her. Practice number four is about creating a space of beauty around you. Now the divine feminine responds to sacred spaces, beautiful spaces that have been created with loving intention. And this doesn't mean that you need to go and spend money. The easiest way to create a loving space that has been created with intention is to get rid of clutter. Okay. Get rid of clutter, clear some space, allow the energy to flow again through the space in your house, in your rooms by clearing out the clutter, getting rid of the stuff that you don't need. And then you can bring in some nature elements. So you can bring in some water or you can bring in plants or if you call, call to working with crystals, you can even bring in crystals. But really create a, a space for yourself that's pleasing to look at and pleasing for you to be in. And then the final practice, practice number five, is all about feeling the feelings. And I want to even take it a step further and say that it's not even just feeling the feelings, but allowing yourself to have those feelings in the first place. That's the starting point. So often we have resistance against what we feel. We make ourselves wrong for feeling certain things. When we keep on deflecting our feelings, when we keep on pushing them down by overeating or overindulging or over shopping, all that we're doing is we're allowing them to come back stronger and come back in ways that are harmful to us. So really by first of all allowing yourself to have these feelings and then feeling them, feeling and hearing what they want us to know. And in this way, we can begin to honor ourselves. All right, so those are my five practices then that will help you to deepen your connection with your feminine essence, with the divine feminine. I'd love to know from you which of these signs you've experienced and which of these practices you are going to try out for yourself. If you've enjoyed this video, then please let me know by giving it a thumbs up also, share your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.